Today we're here with Donald Carlson, the owner of Tweed's Custom Suit Shop. We speak about his process starting that business and a lot of entrepreneurial ideas. We also speak about the nuances of suits and the different qualities, fabrics, things like that. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this conversation with my pal, Donald Carlson. Welcome to the Preferred Shore Podcast. Here's your host, Robert Milligan. Well, Donald, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm a big student of entrepreneurship, and I've got a lot of respect for you and what you're doing with Tweeds, and so I thought it would be an awesome conversation to have to just talk about um, how you think about you know starting businesses, building businesses, and I'd just love to learn more about your story. So yeah, yeah if you don't mind, just start from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so it started uh, knocking on doors for the dry cleaning business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's right, because your family yeah. is um, Carlson yeah, Cleaners, correct? Yeah, Carlson Cleaners, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll just give you like the day one. So I was a magician at Universal Studios after high school. Wow. Thought I was going to become a magician for uh, for my career. Okay. Found out that wasn't going to work out. How did your parents uh, feel about that? They were, were cool. They I, think, I mean, they wanted me to go to college at that same time. Sure. Um, I don't really knew if, know if they knew that that's what I wanted to do for, you know, magic, but that was kind of my plan. Mm-hmm. So, worked at Universal Studios as a magician, and then uh, stopped doing that. How, how long were you there? That's only really six months, not a okay. long time. Yeah, we did. Uh, I did like thirty-minute magic shows, like for like eight hours straight. Okay, and then that didn't pan out the way I thought it would. Huh. So I came back down to Sarasota, asked my dad if I could work for the dry cleaning business, but I didn't want to be like you know another employee. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to build a pickup and delivery service. Um, and so I started knocking on doors and, uh, like the first day I went out knocking on doors, um, I signed up four customers to our route. Um, and then just kept knocking and knocking and knocking. And about six months into that, uh, we had to buy a van to, uh, handle all the deliveries. And then about eight years later, we built it into like a pretty big little pickup and delivery service. So. That, that's an awesome story. Yeah. And that's actually how we first met. You yeah. uh, um, uh, grabbed me out in the parking lot one that's day. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you asked yeah, who. Right back there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I really admire that entrepreneurial passion, the, yeah. the enthusiasm. And you, you, you know, stopped me out there and asked who was doing my dry cleaning. And as it turned out, I wasn't super delighted with yeah. the uh, company that I had been using. And I've been a customer of Carlson Cleaners ever since for, I guess, probably five, six years now, possibly. Yeah. Maybe, maybe four years, five years. Yeah, but. I think it's been about yeah. that much. Yeah, <laughs> yes. so, so I did that for, you know, from like 2012 to 2019. It like, you know, I learned a bunch, mm -hmm. met a lot of great people, um, hustled a lot. And then in 2019, I left the dry cleaning business to start uh, Tweeds, which is a custom clothing business. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, and um, so tell us about that. I mean, um, I know obviously there's a bit of a connection with the dry cleaning yeah. business, but you know, how did you, I mean, first of all, how did you decide that you wanted to start a business? Because that's kind of, you know, in a lot of people's minds, risky, and it, yeah. is, it is risky. Um, you know, was there, did you decide at one point that you definitely want to be a business owner versus a different path in life? Or, you know, yeah. tell me about that process. I think I've always had like a little bit of like an entrepreneur spirit, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the dry cleaning business. So um, I've always felt like it was kind of mine. Like my dad, you know, gave me a lot of rain to like kind of run the business and, and build it. But I think I got a little bit burnt out from it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always like loved wearing suits and dressing up and like, look good, feel good, do good. Um, and so had the idea to get into the custom clothing business. And yeah, I just had a I had a vision and I just, I just went for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, was it, uh, were, were you scared at all or was it just no hesitation? I mean, I would, that... like, I was scared. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I put like all my savings into it. I had went down to like literally like $500 in my bank account. Wow. Like legit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was living at the Arcos at the time and like rent there was like 1800 a month mm -hmm. and it was like, it was super scary, I guess. <laughs> but like, I just believed in myself that I could do it. Right. Right. And, uh, so you know, and it was a, it was a good pivot from the dry cleaning business to the, to, to the custom clothing business. Cause you know, I had a good power base to start off with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you happen to use this advantage or leverage it, but you, you have a database of people that, yeah. you know, exactly. own suits that yeah. are getting them cleaned through your family's company. Yeah. So I'm sure that that probably 
was something that was useful. Of course, <laughs> that you. was very useful. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah. um, so you know, I, I love that story because as an entrepreneur, and I've been there too. Any good entrepreneur has to sometimes take calculated risks. Sometimes you go for broke. Sometimes you do go broke. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but you can always bounce back. And yeah. I've always really believed in the power of the mind that an idea could then create a new income stream or a new opportunity yeah. that obviously can have exponential um, returns. So so I really I, I I love that. And like I said, I really respect the fact that you know you decided to take that risk and um, now you're on the other side of the of the hump so to speak Thank, where yeah you know the business very is very thankful for that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but doing- it took a lot of like a lot of hustle like a lot of grinding and but again like I think when you have like a like a vision and you like really believe in it you'll mm-hmm. make it happen yeah, well, yeah. I know the business is doing well. You've got a lot of fantastic um, customers with a lot of notoriety in town. Um, I'm feeling good right now in my uh, tweeds, tweeds, custom jacket, jacket yeah. and shirt. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've never act- I've had my name inside the, yeah. the jacket. I've never had anything this fancy. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. You feel fancy? <laughs> I do, man. I like this. This is nice. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so um, I'm, a, I'm a customer now, and I think you've got a great product. So, um, you know, I guess maybe let's um, go back to just kind of the startup process. So, you you know, number one, what's the, the idea is definitely unique. I mean, what's your unique value proposition to customers yeah. and how do you distribute the product? Yeah. It's, it's a pretty cool yeah. <laughs> method so, you've got. So, I have a suit shop inside of a 16-foot box truck. <laughs> so, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. And, uh, and I've I always have, like liked the idea of like providing the co- convenience to the customer, mm-hmm. like not letting the customer come to you, but like going to the customer. Mm-hmm. Cause then you kind of hold control over making sure it happens. Like the deal happens or, mm-hmm. you know, convenience is like super important. Yeah. Is there other services that you're aware of in other areas that operate out of box trucks or was that a, a idea completely original to yourself? Or? No. So yeah. me and my girlfriend went on a, uh, a 10 day road trip. Okay in uh, July of 2019. Mm -hmm. And on that road trip, we saw someone doing something similar. Okay. And I saw it and I was like, I have to do this. This is it. (laughs) Literally the day we got back, I sold my car, bought the truck and started building it out. That's awesome. Yeah. I yeah, was I mean, so and, and there's no shame in, in borrowing ideas no. and modifying them a little no, bit. It's, I mean, not, that's it's a, not the idea, it's the execution. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Anybody yeah. can have an idea. Yeah. I, I was listening to a podcast recently, I believe, um, yeah, it was with the founder of, of Netflix and, and he made a statement that there is no such thing as a good idea. Yeah. All ideas are bad ideas, yeah. but it's a matter of how well executed that they are. And, yeah, uh, you know, exactly. clearly you're doing that. I, you know, I come in for my fitting and to get measurements and things, um, uh, into your truck and it's very luxurious. Yeah. I mean, it does, you really forget that you're inside yeah. the back of a box truck. Yeah, it's, it's really super pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's got your personality. You've got, you know, like books and mementos and yeah. things that are, are meaningful to you. So, um, I mean, I guess, tell us about the, was there like a particular method to the design or, you know, what was the, the idea there? Well, you know, the, the truck is obviously small, so I have to mm-hmm. be smart with with the space. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just wanted to kind of speak to me a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's my little, like little office basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, having my books there and, you know, having my personality kind of speak and and shine in the truck is important. Yeah. So I'm sitting with, you know, clients for 45 minutes or, you know, an hour and having conversation with them and getting to know them. And mm-hmm. so it's nice to have like these conversation topics and stuff. Yeah. And there's a uh, air conditioned yeah. wi- Wi-Fi, if I recall, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, every, everything that you need in the, and great visibility. I yeah. mean, it, the, the truck looks great and it's, you know, always parked in prominent locations yeah. in town where there's a lot of visibility. So, yeah. So there's yeah. one truck that goes mobile, which is the first one that I started with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the beginning of starting tweeds, I, uh, you know, I had this mobile truck and I would just park it downtown like Friday and Saturday nights mm-hmm. and pop up shop and quickly found out I can't do that. Yeah. The city doesn't let me do that, <laughs> which is understandable. You sure. can't just like pop up your business on city streets and right, right. You know, run a business. So it made, it kind of forced me to have to get a second truck to actually have like a location. Yeah. So I was upset about it in the beginning, but all things usually turn out to be better. Yeah. So, (laughs) so, um, so what's the, and so now you've got, um, two trucks, three trucks. Uh, I'm working on building out the third one right now. Okay. Yeah. And, um, are you eventually going to have other drivers or people taking measurements or what's Um, the longer range plan? Just day by day, day by day, figure it out as I go, (laughs) fill the orders as they come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Once I get too busy, then maybe hire someone, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like just focused on 
day by day process. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so these days, is there, a, you know, you do a lot of very creative marketing. You I see your stuff. You've got a lot of good things going on social media and things. Um, have you given a lot of thought to like strategic initiatives with, with marketing or internet marketing? I mean, I'd love to learn more about how you think about marketing in general. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be like omnipresent, mm -hmm. just kind of like being everywhere. Omnipresence is a good goal. Yeah. Um, omnipresence if you figure that goal. out, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to be everywhere, right? Like constantly, people constantly seeing me. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I think with tweeds, like the hardest thing I'm kind of overcoming is, you know, people dressing casually, mm -hmm. right? Like throwing on a t-shirt and jeans. Right. Um, and so like, I'm kind of constantly fighting against that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to wear a suit every day, but... It's mm -hmm. nice to like throw on a jacket on a Friday night. Um, so like if you see my Facebook ads um, and the content I produce, I'm always just trying to make it seem cool to wear like a suit mm -hmm. and to dress up because it is cool. It makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of like the thing I'm, I'm pushing against. Yeah, I, I completely agree in terms of it feeling good. And, yeah. You know, people do tend to kind of just treat you a little bit differently when yeah. you're dressed, you know, in something nicer than a T-shirt. Not that obviously, you know, there's Nothing anything wrong, wrong with, with yeah, exactly. t-shirts. And yeah. I know that that is kind of the trend right yeah. now, but I think you're doing a good job of portraying the desirability of, yeah. of looking good, looking yeah. sharp. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with putting on a suit every now and then. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then in our area too, we've unfortunately got uh, warmer weather that's uh, just around the corner. We've had a nice cool. <laughs> yeah. We had the best, winter. I feel like we had the best winter we did. Ever. We had a yeah. great winter yeah. this, this past one, but, uh, but yeah, you know, um, is, is there a particular way you think about like different fabrics and materials and options for people yeah. in summertime? You know, what, what would you recommend, uh, for warmer climate? Yeah. So everything I, I mean, we are in Florida, so basically a lot of the fabrics I source are like lighter weight fabrics, mm -hmm. um, doing like jackets, like unlined. So there's like no lining on the inside mm -hmm. makes a jacket more breathable and lightweight. Uh, feels a little bit more comfortable. So that's something I'm pushing right now as we go into like the summertime. Right. Also like linen jackets, fabrics, like that spring look. Yeah. Summer look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, beyond where you're at right now, which, you know, I don't know if you care to share, like kind of what your annual sales volume is or anything along those lines. Are you comfortable sharing some of your stats or would you prefer going a different direction for now? Or <laughs> I'm trying to do good. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> That's fair yeah. enough. <laughs> I'll say like every time I close a sale, I'm happy for about three minutes and I'm working on finding the next yeah, one. That, that's so, perf yeah. That's perfectly fine. I, yeah. I respect that. And yeah. so I'm curious though, like the longer range vision, I mean, I know you say you're just trying to kind of take it day by day, yeah. which is, which is smart, but I'm, but I'm sure you've given some thought, you know, I mean, where have you, do, could you quantify like where you'd like to be a year from now, five years from now? I mean, what's, what's the, the main vision would you say? Um, man, I, I really, I, I guess I don't really look at it too much like that. Mm -hmm. I just, I just really do take it like day by day and like just sale by sale. And mm -hmm. like, I just think like naturally as I continue to get busier and figure out the business, like it just will continue to adapt and take mm -hmm. me to in the direction that it should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I mean, I've always been the sort of person to try to pre-plan yeah. way in advance. Yeah. And sometimes things go according to plan. Usually, you know, that doesn't really um, mimic the plans that you had in mind yeah. at all. And yeah. that sometimes is better than what you planned. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like with the dry cleaning business, I didn't know if I was going to be in that business forever. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I was going to take it over from my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but every day I just gave it my all, mm -hmm. built relationships, continued to try to build it, and then just naturally tweets happened. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know. I never had a plan to start a custom clothing business or never knew what I was going to do next. It just kind of happened. Right, yeah. right. It seems like there's a lot of moving pieces and complexity in, in, the, in the custom clothing industry. I mean, I know in my industry in real estate, there's, there's definitely a lot of moving parts to facilitating, you know, real estate transactions. But, you know, maybe if you don't mind sharing some of the nuances of, you know, the things that, that you're involved in, in terms of sourcing fabrics, obviously measuring people is always different. And, you know, I'm just curious because I don't really know too much about it, but what are some of the nuances that you have to deal with in your, your industry? Yeah, the, I mean, the most complicated part is the measurements mm -hmm. for sure. You know, having to look at like postures and, you know, arm lengths and shoulders and everything at all all that kind of plays into like creating the perfect fit. Mm -hmm. um, 
so that's that's definitely the biggest moving part mm -hmm. it's easy not easy but i kind of have like an eye for i think i've got a good eye for like making people look good um and so that's what i really love about it mm -hmm. you know putting the like the right garments on on the right people mm -hmm. um but the measuring process is, mm -hmm. is definitely a, a difficult one it's very extensive yeah. whenever um you measured me i mean yeah. I, yeah there was a lot lot to that for sure um, and I'm sure there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to yeah. do that to and get I've the right learned. outcome. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, fabrics? I mean, did did you really have to become an expert in understanding all the different qualities and thread counts and yeah. wearability? I mean, tell tell me about that. Yeah, there's so bit. you know, there's so many different, there's tons of different fabrics, fabric mills, types of fabrics, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, sourcing the fabrics was was a fun process for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of nuances to the fabrics as well. Mm -hmm. Also like the actual construction, like of, of the jacket itself. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of times, like if you buy like an off the rack jacket, mm -hmm. they'll use like a fusing or like a gluing process to actually uh, craft the garment. Okay. <clears throat> and back in the dry cleaning business, we would have jackets come through the process and they would start to like bubble up. I see. Yeah. And I always like, was like, are we doing something wrong? Like what, what is this? Mm -hmm. And we, I never really understood why that happened and getting into the custom clothing business. I found out that it's because like the cheaper made garments have fusing and a gluing process. Hmm. Um, we're like tweeds garments and more high end garments. We use full canvas and half canvas, mm -hmm. um, processes to make the gar to make the jackets. Right. Um, which, you know, eliminates, that whole that whole yeah. problem that's in, that's interesting yeah. i um i had no idea yeah. there are other are there other things like that that may not be you know um knowledge that, that yeah. we readily have <laughs> yeah so another like small detail like uh like functioning buttonholes or or surgeon sleeves okay. a lot of times when you buy off the rack like the buttons mm -hmm. on your sleeve they're just there for decoration right, right um and that's because when you buy off the rack like if you have short arms you may have to shorten the sleeves mm -hmm. um so they can't be functioning buttonholes. Like these buttonholes actually button and I unbutton. Okay. Um, and so like, that's a subtle detail. Hmm. So mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. Yeah. It's a subtle, that. yeah. It's a subtle uh -huh. detail to know, like if you have functioning buttonholes, it's a, it should be a custom suit. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I have noticed that and, uh, I didn't actually realize, but yeah, those yeah. are uh, functioning. Yeah. Which buttons. is super, super cool. Like, yeah, all this stuff I kind of learned getting into the business and stuff. Right. Right. What about um, supply chains and things? Have you had any challenges with the, I know a lot of industries have had supply challenges with COVID manufacturing delays and yeah. things like that. Um, did you experience any of that? Not, not too bad. Good. Yeah. I mm -hmm. had some Italian mills that, you know, we had, we did have like delays getting the fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily I didn't like get too much of a hit. Yeah. Yeah. I got very lucky. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So tell us about the suit that you're wearing today, because that's a cool, cool suit. <laughs> yeah, I figured I'd, I'd uh, make a little pop today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what what type of fabric? And uh, So this is 100% wool. Okay. Um, it's a super 120, mm -hmm. and the, the weight is like 265 grams, which just means it's like a nice lightweight fabric for, okay. for Florida. Mm -hmm. um, also, when people hear wool, a lot of times they think it's like uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, but it's not when it's, you know, actually woven properly okay um it'll feel really nice on your skin mm -hmm. uh breathe really well droop well um a lot of times you want to stay away from like polyester fabrics right uh, which is like a synthetic fiber that will like trap heat okay not droop as well mm -hmm. um so yeah getting into like a hundred percent wool garment is uh definitely got it game and, and I've, I've seen the super 120 you know like advertised or touted or whatever what what exactly does that mean so be i mean the the higher you get there's actually some fabrics that are like super 300, super okay, 180, wow. so they get very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but a super 120 is a good fabric to like an everyday suit. Mm -hmm. The higher you go up, basically the more delicate the fabric I gets. Mm -hmm. And so the more wear mm -hmm. it'll get. So like a super 180 wouldn't be like a like an everyday suit. Got it. Um, but like a super 120 is a good everyday okay. suit. Yeah, because yeah, I've seen with other jackets and stuff, like it wears out kind of like on the yeah. elbows. And, and, and like and, on your pants too, right. like you get a lot of wear in, wearing the in the 
you know, crotch area. Right, right. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So 120, you'd say is the best for yeah. like an everyday. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely, probably nothing higher than like a 150. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, what would the, I mean, what who who's buying a super 300? Yeah. And how much does that cost? I'm I actually just, don't even carry any super yeah. 300s. <laughs> yeah, uh, they get very expensive though. Yeah, yeah. My, I mean, my typical suit is in like the. 1600 range okay um but i have suits that start at 899 mm -hmm. um so like anywhere between like 1299 and 2k is typically what like guys are spending got it and that gets you into like the super 150 range for like a 2k suit yeah 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 i mean and uh yeah i'm just curious um what the advantage or benefit or you know would that be more of like a formal yeah like what's I mean, a what's a typical like a black black tie tuxedo what would that fabric typically that'd be, be like a super 120 typically yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. i mean it is a suit that you're not going to wear as often so you right. can definitely you know maybe you just want to spend a lot of money on a suit Right, you know? right. <laughs> Lucky for you, um, yeah. Sarasota is a big black tie uh, yeah. town. Um, Getting back into it now. I know, yeah. yeah. And so I'm sure that um, as people begin with all the, you know, the philanthropic fundraisers and black tie events and everything, that hopefully will benefit you. Um, are are you planning and making plans to expand geographically beyond, you know, kind of the, the Gulf Coast region that we're in? I mean, now? I'm slowly, like, expanding my marketing uh, targets to like Naples and mm -hmm. Tampa and Miami and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just like strategically just slowly doing that. Right, yeah. right. What would your challenges be to enter different markets like Naples, Miami? I mean, because you can't yourself be physically yeah, so, everywhere. No, right, Even exactly. Even though you want to be omnipresent, there right. are some limitations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess, you know, if I do want to expand – you know, further than like Miami, yeah. you know, I'd have to, I need to hire guys that can measure and understand the process and, yeah. you know, represent tweeds the way that I, I want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, I, I do offer like a bespoke service. So, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm driving to Miami to go measure up a guy, um, when the suit comes in, I need to go, you know, personally deliver it and make sure everything fits properly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's, you know, alterations and adjustments that need to be made. Um, right. So then that would require a second fitting. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, driving three hours is... Yeah, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but if anybody can figure out omnipresence, it might be a magic trick. It might yeah. be, it <laughs> it might might be the be, magician. It might be you. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about that because you mentioned before that you've, um, I mean, I'm just curious. I think it's interesting to talk about, you know, how how did you get into magic? Um, yeah. You know, tell us more yeah. about that. I know you've got some interesting pals in the in that community. Yeah. You know, tell, tell us a little bit more yeah. about that. <laughs> so, I forget how old I was, probably like, 10 or 12. Yeah. And I was in, uh, have you ever been to Helen, Georgia? Uh, this is the city actually called hell. Yeah. Helen. Yeah. Oh, Helen. Yeah. Helen. Yeah. I was thinking of, uh, like, I know there's hell Jamaica, No, I've you know, never they have that, the yeah. t-shirts and bumper stickers, like, you know, um, no, you know, I've been to hell. No, I've never, I've never <laughs> okay, heard of that. Okay. Helen. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, it's like an no. hour outside of Atlanta. I'm sure I've probably passed through, but never, okay. never okay. made conscious thought yeah. you know, of it. It's a cool <laughs> little town, but anyway, yeah. uh, we used to like visit Helen, Georgia, like growing okay. up and, uh, I walked into a magic shop and some guy took a $1 bill and changed it into a 20 ah. and that was it. That was it. <laughs> so the, yeah. that, and it, it triggered um, the interest in magic and the entrepreneurial and the spirit yeah. Yeah. All, all in one fell swoop. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I just like bought a bunch of their magic tricks Okay. Learned the magic, practice it, got obsessed with it. Yeah. And then I started like every time we would go up to Helen, I would I would work at the magic shop. Like that's oh, all really? I wanted to do was oh. be at the magic shop all oh, day. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then and so I mean, how did how did you kind of progress into being worthy of you know it working took, at Universal Studios? Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. it took it took a while to like figure out exactly like what type of magic I liked. Okay. So I'd say a few years into it, I I realized I just like to do card tricks. Mm-hmm. Just like sleight of hand. I think I like the challenge of like learning a new sleight and like mm -hmm. demonstrating a, a trick properly. Um, and yeah, so I, it took me a, few, uh, a while to figure out what I liked. But uh, yeah, yeah, sleight of hand card tricks is, is what I do. Yeah, and there's another pal that you have that went on to yeah. some national yeah. dom recognition. In, yeah, in that so world. yeah, I don't know if anyone listening to this has heard of Shin Lim, but mm -hmm. I met him back in uh, uh, at the... Okay, what's the Opperland Hotel in is that what's that Gaylord? Nashville? Yeah, the Gaylord Opperland yeah. Hotel mm -hmm. in uh, Nashville, I think. I believe so, yeah. yeah I know like, they have an Orlando one too. But yeah, yeah, like he mm -hmm. was like 14, I was like 13. And wow. we just 
we met each other. We started doing magic and we talked for like, became good friends for like eight years. And then mm -hmm. he kind of continued to do it. And I started to do the dry cleaning business. So we lost touch, but right, right. yeah, he won America's Got Talent like four years ago. Yeah. Which I, is super I actually cool. watched that yeah. season and yeah. uh, he was a very talented yeah. magician. Yeah. Really he's cool. a super cool guy. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, I really like dug deep in like the magic community. Like mm -hmm. I would travel to like California and mm -hmm. Georgia and like all the States and just go to magic conventions mm -hmm. and practice magic tricks with my magic friends all night long. <laughs> yeah. Do you see yourself ever getting back, Maybe. back into magic? Somewhere? I mean, yeah, I would like to, but yeah, I guess like I'm just, I'm just more focused on business right now. Yeah. But I would say one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of magic friends up, friends up in Orlando. I'd like to reconnect with and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we don't wear capes or anything. We're just like normal guys <laughs> just like practicing card tricks all day long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, you watch some of these, these characters on TV, like Chris Angel and uh, yeah. I don't know, but I was it, a I big mean, fan of Chris Angel. Were you? Yeah. Time. It yeah. makes you, it makes you wonder. I mean, I know it's not, you know, impossible, yeah. but I mean, it's like, wow, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, <laughs> it is cool for sure. Mm -hmm. I got to meet David Blaine, which was cool. He was that's at one of the nice. conventions. Super okay. cool guy. Mm -hmm. David Copperfield and uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's definitely a, a passion for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I'm curious, um, you know, to kind of just dive, dive in a little bit deeper, maybe again, you know, marketing, um, customer acquisition, you know, I mean, how, I know that you're a very direct person to, to you know, just go straight for having meaningful encounters with people that's going to result in, in, you know, sales. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what would you say if you could summarize like some of your, your, actual actions, activities that you take during the course of a day to produce sales. I'm yeah. just curious. So knocking on doors, mm -hmm. right? Like just keeping, got to keep the pipeline full. Mm -hmm. Got to keep like the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. um, sending like selfie videos to mm -hmm. clients I haven't talked to in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, contacts I need to reconnect with. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great thing. Just a selfie text. Yeah. Um, when you mean when you say sell, like a video of you talking? Yeah, to, I'll just to be them. like, hey. Yeah. Uh, so it's having, like a personal. Yeah, exactly. Video yeah, that rather than just like a them. text. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. super cool. People really like that. Mm -hmm. um, that that results in sales mm -hmm. um, often, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. That's about it. I mean, there's so, I, many, so many things you have to do to. Yeah. And I'll, I'll jog your memory a little bit because there was something that stood out to me that I thought was cool that it seems like you have some like brand ambassadors in town, people like kind of influencers that will go on like you've had, I want to say like, like model shoots, so yeah, to speak, yeah. but they're just regular, regular people, but yeah. they're wearing your, yeah. your suits. Like on the Suncoast View. Uh, I think so. And I've seen some stuff on, um, but I've seen some stuff on social media as well, yeah. where you've had, you know, I don't know, it seems like you've hired a professional photographer to come and do like a shoot with yeah. your customers. Yeah. Um, so what, like every, uh, like I try to do it every six weeks where I, I invite my clients to come out and do photo shoots and mm -hmm. get shots of their new suit and they can use it for their own purposes. And mm -hmm. I use it for mar marketing purposes. Okay. Um, so for them, it might be like professional portraiture type yeah. that they can use yeah. in their own marketing and new things. Tinder pick. <laughs> nice. yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's super, you know, and that, that allows me to provide something of value to my client. And then mm -hmm. I get to post about it, talk about, mm -hmm. talk about the client. And I think that's a um, very smart idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super fun. And, and trying to build like a little community for sure. Yeah. Um, any, anything else comes to mind to, um, produce sales. Uh, I know that you've done, you've created some hyperlapsed videos yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, I Facebook. do, I do like a lot of Facebook ads and yeah. Google ads. And Are you the uh, creative engineer behind the process or do you have somebody that so kind of, I've, I've got a video guy who, you know, I'll kind of give him an idea of what I want done. Right. And then he'll kind of create it for me. Right. And then my photographer does all the shoots and then I, um, I have a buddy who does all the, the ads for me. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're not the one kind of imagining what the ads are going to look like and all that kind of stuff. They're, they're kind of taking the lead. Um, the no, I do. Like I'll give the vision of the video to, mm -hmm. you know, the videographer, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, to kind of tell them like what I want the video to, to try to portray. Right. Um, and then, yeah. And then he'll take it from there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, do you, do you think, uh, that our realtors would be more productive if they were to buy some tweed suits and look sharp on the job? Yeah. I think they'd feel better, <laughs> <laughs> more confidence, yeah, you for know, sure, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. It's an experience. Like it's, it's different than just like going online and like pressing a button and buying something or mm -hmm. going to a store and 
buying a suit like you know you get like a personal like mm -hmm. old school like experience and that's what i love about this business like it's like an old school business but like i bring like this new school vibe to it and right um you know there are like a lot of issues with buying off the rack that yeah. custom fixes right um you know like number one being like the fit mm -hmm. right getting the perfect fit uh number two would be like you know, kind of like with off the rack, what you see is what you get. Like you don't really get to customize it. Mm -hmm. There's only so many options to pick from. Mm -hmm. So like with tweeds, there's like thousands of different fabrics mm -hmm. help you point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I must say that, um, I've prior to this jacket have always bought my suits and jackets and everything off the rack. Yeah. And then I would have to go and take them to yeah. a tailor that yeah. I found that I've, I have a good relationship. But yeah, I mean, um, when I put this jacket on, it literally fit perfectly like a glove. Yeah. And that was a really great feeling, you know, yeah. I mean, it was, it was really nice to just look at it. I was like, wow, this is one of the best fitting jackets I've ever, ever slipped on. So Love to hear you know, that. that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank it's you. really, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I'm curious about, um, cause you know, there might be, of course, our audience is primarily realtors. We have a lot of realtors, some at our company, most at other brokerages around, around the area. Um, who everybody's essentially an entrepreneur as a, as a realtor, yeah. but in terms of just entrepreneurship in general, what I've typically found is a lot of people don't realize how the complexity of it, the mindset associated with being an entrepreneur. And I'm just curious when, you know, when you start a business, it's always exciting to have like a great idea and then start kind of building it. Was there a lot of details and, and nuances and things that were a little bit surprising to you? For example, like, you know, just taxes and, you know, with your truck, now you've got, you know, now you've got a fleet, now you've got insurance issues and liabilities yeah. and just a lot of stuff that you don't think about when it's new and exciting. Was there, would you say, was there a lot of things like that that were kind of surprising to you that day by day you just kind of had to figure out? Or Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even I was collecting sales tax for the first three months of starting tweed, but not paying it. <laughs> um, and obviously I had to sure. go back and pay it. I expected sure. to pay it, sure. but like I had to hire Just a CPA and he was like, uh, you need to pay this else you're going to get a fine. <laughs> I was like, Okay, let's get that done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I just figured, like, you just paid at the end of the year or whatever. Right, I wasn't, right. I had no idea. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, in love, the dry cleaning business, that. <laughs> yeah. my dad, like, handled all that stuff. Right. Um, so, yeah, that was one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just kind of navigating the idea of, like, the whole mobile business and, like, how to make sure I'm following the rules of the city because I don't want to do anything, mm -hmm. you know, outside of the rules. Like, I want to make sure I'm, you know, playing within mm -hmm. the lines and everything. Um but it's cool, like getting getting to like write off dinners and stuff. Like oh, yeah. that's the fun thing. Yeah, there's definitely um, <laughs> yeah. Um, pros and cons yeah. to all of this sort of thing. Um, yeah. And uh, you are buying a home presently, which yeah. you've also, I think, um, come to realize there's different challenges with being, you know, a 1099 yeah. entrepreneur yeah. versus having a W-2, yeah. you know, salary yeah. in terms of qualifying for loans and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of different issues that, but, uh, but in, in spite of that, I mean, it, it wasn't so difficult that you would, you know, that, that you wouldn't recommend other people give it a shot if they oh, have a no. dream or for passion. Sure not. Yeah. 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 If you got a dream, like a vision, you think you can execute it? Mm -hmm. do it you just gotta yeah you figure it out day, yeah day like by i day. like for me like it was really important that like i had to leave the dry cleaning business to start tweeds mm -hmm. because i if i stayed in the dry cleaning business i would have been comfortable mm -hmm. like because i would have still had that income mm -hmm. and so i had to i had to leave that and like be like you got to do it right you know what i mean like yeah i just have to tell the story the first appointment i went on uh it was one of my it was one of my dry clean clients I like I got on the truck he came out we picked the fabrics and I was all ready to like make the sale and and I was going to go into the measuring because I used to do them the process used to be like I would talk to the client mm -hmm. pick the fabrics and then do the measuring last okay and now I do it differently I measure first okay or, or I'll and during the measuring process I'll figure out what we're looking for mm -hmm. and then we'll do the designing um and I did the measuring process last Okay. And I, I forgot my tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go run to CVS and go get a tape measure. But luckily yeah. it was like someone I knew, like, you yeah. know, it was funny. And that's yeah, awesome. I'll never forget that. Literally the first real appointment. Yeah. That is fantastic. I love that story. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of one of, I was, uh, you know, I don't know if it was the first, it wasn't the first house I had shown, but it was, you know, I was very new in my real estate career. And um, the key that was in the lockbox on the front door was to a back door that we had to walk around and it was a vacant, vacant home. But long story short, there was a gate 
to get around to the back. I started fiddling around with trying to open the gate and I dropped the key in very tall grass yeah. and never was able to find you never the key. I mean, well. We were trying to rip all the grass up, trying to find this stupid wow. key. And yeah, same same sort of That's thing. Hilarious. Just, like, just ridiculous yeah. rookie mistakes. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. it's funny how, how uh, beginner's luck sometimes yeah. has a way of those, those sorts of funny things. So yeah. um, I love what you mentioned that you kind of had to like burn burn the bridges, so yeah. to speak, for, you know, that you cut off any possibility yeah. of failure that, yeah. you know. And you, my dad let me know that. Yeah. You're not coming back if you're doing this. Not yeah. in like a bad way, but just like, you know, in a, in a, fatherly way like right you're gonna go figure it out and you're do your own thing which was super cool like that's what i wanted to do it or, yeah. or not but yeah. there's not like you can't be yeah you bone. can't and i and i yeah. wasn't like it wasn't even in my mind that i would like had that as a backup or like yeah a you know support it wasn't like mm -hmm. i i was just going for tweets that was it yeah, yeah. and i would say I that, make that it that's why it's working yeah. you know um too many entrepreneurs, um, people in business, they just dabble, you know, they kind of sort of yeah. try and you have to, it's like a trapeze. You can't, you know, hang on to the last one to, and, and grab on to the next yeah. I mean, you got to let go. You got yeah, to like commit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I would imagine that, uh, that that had a lot to do with the reason that you're succeeding so well as you are presently. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, any, any other kind of entrepreneurial lessons like that, that come to mind that, you know, regarding your mindset or something that you feel has served you well in this journey? Hmm. Nothing that comes to mind right now. Yeah. Anything no, about sorry. like customer service, you know, just the way Still, you treat but people. I mean, not, like it's such a like cliche thing to say, mm -hmm. but like go above and beyond mm -hmm. and like every way. Mm -hmm. in every way you can. Yeah. And I would say that yeah. you, you do that. Yeah. I've, I've definitely observed. Have you, and I'm just curious, um, cause you know, I think the next level of, of your growth will be starting to team build a little bit, yeah. hire people, yeah. you know, um, yeah. Cause at a certain point, like that's the only way Yeah, to continue to go. Yeah, of sure. course. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts regarding kind of qualifications or attributes of people you're looking to build your team or leadership structures or anything like that that comes I, to mind? I haven't thought about it too much, but I mean, mm -hmm. number one would just be like, they have to like represent, like I, I have to feel it. Like they have to represent what I'm trying to build mm -hmm. really, really well mm -hmm. for sure. We have good intuition. You've yeah. got a good gut for figuring out yeah. who's a good fit and yeah. what you're, what you're going after. Um, I know that you like to read books, lots of nonfiction business books, things like that. Are yeah. there, is there a book or two that come to mind that you would recommend? Well, I'm reading right now. This is good for realtors is uh, big money energy okay. by Ryan Serhant. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I, I, Ryan Serhant's a really cool guy. Yeah. He seems, seems yeah. like it. I've seen yeah. plenty of his YouTube videos. Yeah. He's and things. got some hilarious stories in that book. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I might have to check that out. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's a great book. Um, mm -hmm. let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I'm reading right now. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I'm a big Grant Cardone guy. Okay. I listen to Grant Cardone a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I try to like, I, I try to like stick to one person a little bit because mm -hmm. like, I feel like you can just get like thrown in so many different ways. There are a lot of voices right now. Yeah. A lot of voices. <laughs> and, and it can be distracting. Yeah. I'll go through like a lot of times where I just don't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's like good to listen to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and Grant Cardone's just someone I listen. I, you know, I like his mindset, 10 X, like, mm -hmm. you know, hustle. And, and so like, I've kind of mm -hmm. been listening to him for like the past five years. So nice. kind of like a little bit deep into like his material. Yeah. So as a entrepreneur, is there, um, like a, a network or group of people that you surround yourself with and where I'm going with this, there's an old adage and I do believe it's true that you're kind of the, the average or the sum of the five people that you're closest associated with do, do you are you so busy right now you don't have any time to hang out with anybody i or, wish <laughs> <laughs> or, or do you trying is, to get there yeah, yeah. or no there, i mean is there like a, a strategic way you think about like trying to hang out with people that you respect and learn from and things like that curious yeah, right now i'm just right now i'm not going out too much mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i definitely surround myself with good guys Mm -hmm. I got a lot of friends that, you know, we have the same values and we're trying to be busier and build bigger businesses and, and mm -hmm. do well. So I definitely think that's super important for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, um, well I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about the, the conversation so far. Is there anything that we haven't spoken about that you'd like to 
add or share or further expound on? Any I mean, wise words for the world? <laughs> any <laughs> wise words? <laughs> if you are thinking about starting a business, I think the most important thing is definitely making that leap. Mm -hmm. You got to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Can't get think. some bills and then that'll make you make you have to produce. <laughs> yeah. I um, remember early in my career as a, as an agent in production, I had hired an assistant before I could really afford to, or had enough work for them to really even yeah. do. And that made you, and it made me not yeah. only, you know, show up to start earning more so I could afford to pay them, yeah. but it also caused me to focus on revenue productive activities yeah. that I could start to yeah. allocate to them to do. And, um, so, you know, cause I didn't want to show up every day and be pathetic and be yeah. like, Oh, I only have like 20 minutes worth of work. For you to yeah. do. I had to start thinking of something yeah, for exactly. them to do and think of a way to pay them. And so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of backwards thinking yeah. sometimes um no, i wouldn't, I I wouldn't say that it's like fake it till you make it i wouldn't call it that no. it's just uh it's having a little bit of faith yeah. you know that uh i'm it's, it's like you said to commit yeah, you know? yeah. and i like that too revenue producing activities mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of noise out there there's a lot of distraction i don't know your industry nearly so well as i know ours but in real estate, you know, there's all kinds of articles and opinions of all the things that you're supposed to be doing or should be doing. Yeah. You should be blogging. You should be changing the colors on your website. You should be doing all this stuff that, you know, isn't really ever going to result in a sale. So it is, Im it's important to be able to cut through the noise yeah. and uh, be intentional about the activities that you're involving yourself in and the way that you're spending your time, you know, it's a, yeah, I mean, I don't like, I think the number one thing in, in a business is before anything else is making sure you can get a sale yeah. because you have nothing without a sale. You don't have right. a business without a sale. Right. And then when you get the sale, then you focus on making sure you provide the best customer experience and right. get the next referral, whatever. But right. first you have to have a sale. Yeah. Um, could and then not you figure it out. Could not agree yeah. more. It is, it's um, troubling how sometimes people try to perfect a process or a product yeah. Or they go on a on a mission to convince the world why their thing that they're in love with is the ultimate thing that yeah. everybody should have, and 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 nobody nobody wants that yeah. thing, and you know, and then you just become an ambassador for something that nobody's buying, yeah. you know, and and uh, so yeah, I totally agree that sales should always come first yeah. as the highest priority, yeah. and then you know, I, I think that in entrepreneurship you should fail fast, fail often until you find something that you know, is, is figuratively flying off the shelves. If, if you have a lot of sales, you know, and, and, and it's a challenge to fill all those orders, that's the first priority. Find that yeah. and then figure out how to... Then you will figure it out. Correct. Yeah. Get, you know, provide great service, hire competent people. Yeah. You know, all the other stuff will fall in the line, but nothing else matters if there's not a sale. <laughs> yeah, so this is a <clears throat> good little story here, mm -hmm. which we didn't really touch on. During COVID, you know, like I got into the face mask Oh, right. Business, I remember. Right? Yeah. And this was crazy. I mean, lit literally the craziest experience. So like I got a call from my suit house or, you know, they knew like in the beginning of COVID, you know, things were slowing down and uh, they're like, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm a little slow right now. Just kind of mm. renovating my little condo, trying to stay busy. They're like, I'm like, how you guys doing? They're like, we're staying busy, like super busy. I'm like, really? What are you guys doing? Yeah. Like, well, we're starting to sell face masks and they're <laughs> like, well, we think you should start selling face masks. Mm -hmm. I was like, thought about it again. Like I, I don't like to like with the dry cleaning business, I did dry cleaning mm -hmm. for eight years. I didn't try to figure out another thing that a little other thing. I just put everything into the dry cleaning mm -hmm. with tweeds. I'm putting everything into tweeds, mm -hmm. but this was an opportunity that was clear. So I was like, okay, I'll take 500 face masks and I'll see what I can do with them. And mm -hmm. So I did a little Facebook live and like 20 minutes later, like I sold all the face masks because wow. America didn't have face masks. Right? right. For a while. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like this wasn't, this was a new thing. And so I was like, all right, give me 2000 more. Mm -hmm. And in like three weeks I sold like, I don't know, like 10 or 15,000 face masks. Mm -hmm. So I called my buddy. I was like, yo, I think, uh, I think we have something here. I think we should start a face mask company and mm -hmm. start selling face masks. <laughs> and, uh, like it just popped off like nice. crazy. And like by the third day we were doing like, I'll say these numbers cause it's like, sure. whatever we're doing like and like by the third day, we were doing 30K a day in sales wow. by the third day. Cause wow. like this was, you know, this was a needed product and I yeah. had it, I had the source for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so like 
we didn't have a way to fulfill these orders. We didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just kept getting busier and busier and busier. And so we had to find a little fulfillment center. We hired 15 people Hmm. to fulfill these orders all day long, eight hours a day. And for those, this was like that for six months straight. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was nuts. It was a crazy experience. But what I'm saying is we didn't like be like, let's stop selling and try to figure out how we're going to fulfill first. No, we just kept going and going and we figured out how to fulfill the orders. And it was, uh, it was crazy. Yeah. Was Most crazy. of the time, that's the right answer. Good, yeah, good yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, it was like super, super cool experience. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, any, anything else that comes to mind you'd like to share that we haven't covered? No, I can't. Awesome, buddy. Else. Well, yeah. um, I love my jacket and uh, I really respect what you're doing. What's the best way for people to get more info, to learn more about you? Where yeah. would you send them? Yeah, a few different ways. You could check out my Instagram, okay. which is Tweed's Suit Shop. Mm-hmm. Post a lot of cool content there. You can check out my website if you want to get a new custom suit, which mm-hmm. is uh, tweedsuitshop.com. Okay. Or you can call me, which is 941-343-7606. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I really respect what you're doing, Donald. I really yeah. appreciate you uh, spending some time here with us today. And uh, for everybody watching, I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you all again soon. Bye, everyone. Living